The Ultra Bowl and I have seen a lot of crazy shit at regionals and YCSs. Never been to nationals, but I have had my invite a few times. So let's talk about things that you should not do, or rather what not to do at a Yu-Gi-Oh event. Let's dive on into it and smash that little old Ultra Bowl, shall we? an ultra ball at that like and subscribe button so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Remember, every time someone subscribes, the ultra ball has a higher catch rate and it looks sexier every single time we gain a subscriber. So if you want to be part of the ultra ball squad, help me get to that catch rate up so that maybe one day we can get to 1,000 subs or maybe even get a girlfriend, you know, just like, ladies, hit, hit, hit your boy up, you know, get hit me up on MySpace because MySpace is all yours. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> All jokes aside, though, I want to talk about what not to do at a Yu-Gi-Oh event. You know, what not to do to Yu-Gi-Oh regional, YCS nationals, worlds, European, stick a master duel player up my butt, like whatever kind of event that you're going to. <laughs> so, you know, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh competitively for over 10 years now, right? And I've seen so many things at Yu-Gi-Oh events. I even have some stories that, yes, the story time series will continue. I'm just trying to figure out what stories I want to tell and also been busy with life and things like that. Um, but after going to the Boca Raton Regional here in Florida, uh, there were some things that stuck out in my mind that I really wanted to address to the community and also to see what the community has for ideas on how to make events better and also things that you shouldn't do. The number one thing that I'm going to tell you of what not to do at a Yu-Gi-Oh event is, and this is probably more for the event organizers, is don't have the time clock on a monitor in the middle of the fucking room where nobody can see it. So when I was at the Boca Raton Regional, unless you were at the edge, like the very end of the table that you were sitting at, you had no way to see the time clock. So what people were doing was that they were just keeping track on their phones or like someone would walk by or a judge would walk by and they'd say, hey, how much time is left on the clock? And that can be very detrimental, especially when you have these new time rules in place where once the clock hits zero, you got to end that current phase. So if you're about to go into battle phase, but you're still in main phase and you think you maybe have 30 seconds and really there's two seconds and the clock hits zero, then you're just screwed. Now, like I said, you can keep track on your phone, but you know, obviously you're not gonna keep your screen on the whole time because that drains your battery and then you won't be able to use it for the later rounds, you know, things like that. So I appreciate the fact that Prodigy Games, which that regional book of return minus the fact that my car my car window got broken and luckily nothing was stolen, but minus that fact, which was no fault of Prodigy Games, that was the hotel, it was the best regional I've ever been to, hands down, in the 10 plus years I've been playing. Thank you so much, Prodigy Games. I always love shouting them out. Really great people. Huge shout out to them. Um, and I, I'm sure that they were doing their best with what they had, um, but having a time clock on a like HD monitor, or like a LG Dell monitor, whatever it was, just in the middle of the room where only the people that were at the edge of the, of the table could see it is really not very good for competitive play. Also, something that I saw round one at that regional, where I was sitting when I turned to my right at the end of the table, there was these two guys playing. And every time that one of the guys would make a move, this other guy who was like an Asian guy had glasses on and like a pink t-shirt, like a pink tie, like he was going to a fucking interview, which that's another thing. Don't dress up to the fucking nines when you're going to play fucking cards with a bunch of dudes who probably over half in the room didn't shower the night before. Like you don't need to show up like in a suit and tie. That makes you look like a douchebag. <laughs> like if you're cosplaying, that's, that's actually really cool. But if you're just showing up like a suit and tie to try and show people up, or to like play mind games with people. You're not playing mind games with people. You just look like you're about to go to a fucking job interview after you like go X3 drop. <laughs> but what was going on was that the dude the in like the pink tie and pink shirt, every time his opponent would make a move, he would flip out and be like, oh, 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 oh. And like, it was throwing me off because I'm trying to pay attention to my opponent and like out of the corner of my eye, I'm seeing this dude like flip the fuck out every time his opponent makes a move. And his opponent called him out on it. He's like, I don't know what you're doing, but what you're doing is starting to piss me off. And I feel like you're trying to get in my head because now you're trying to make me misplay. So he calls a judge over and, and literally the opponent, he was all chill with that. He was just trolling, I guess. Cause he's just like, call judge. And it's like, really, you're just gonna say call judge and like, just be a fucking asshole. Like, no, fuck you, dude. Like, don't be that type of dickhead who just like makes a reaction every time someone makes a move. Cause if you do that with me, I'm gonna call a judge and say that you're rule sharking. Cause you're trying to throw me off of my game. You're trying to psych me out mentally. Like. 
th that's the thing. Like, if you got to psych someone out mentally just to win a fucking regional, like, you are just bad at this game. I'm sorry. Sit there, you know, wear sunglasses if you want so that, you know, you can have, like, more of a poker face. You shouldn't even be doing that, in my opinion. But besides the point, sit there and just say whether something is fine or not. Declare your phases, especially since now you have to wear a mask at events, which that's another thing, too. Be sure to wear your mask over your nose. Don't be the dumbass who has it underneath their nose. I'm not going to get into the politics of wearing a mask or not. I'm just saying you have to have it over your nose and, you know, all that other stupid shit. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, be sure you're wearing a mask and all that and just declare your phases, you know, don't, don't be an asshole, you know, that, go, that should go without saying where there's some people who are just dickholes in the community. That happened with my dad actually at a Kissimmee regional a couple of years ago where my dad, of course, was playing Mystic Mind Burn. Every time he played a card, the guy would go, oh, 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 and he's like freaking the fuck out like he was off his meds or something. That's why I say some Yu-Gi-Oh players go to events like high or on cocaine, drugs or some shit. Shouldn't be doing that anyway, but besides the point. So don't try and psych people out mentally. And if you are the Asian guy with the pink tie and the pink t-shirt on, you're watching this video, you're a fucking asshole. Like you just are. Don't be doing that to people being a dickhead. I think he even scrubbed out anyway and went into like the winning mats or whatever. But anyway, just don't be an asshole to people. Don't try and psych people out mentally because you're just going to get DQ'd. Um, some other obvious things too, <clears throat> excuse me, don't rule shark. If you rule shark, you will get DQ'd. Uh, if you try and rule shark me, I'm a call a judge on your ass every time. Um, luckily I have, in all my years of playing Yu-Gi-Oh, I really haven't ran into a lot of rule sharks, um, overall. Uh, I would say I've probably ran into issues more with stacking, um, where like, I remember when Max C was at like two, and I was flipping through my deck because I had like some sort of search effect and both my maxis were back to back in the middle of my deck. And I looked at my opponent, I'm like, wow, both my maxis are in the middle of my deck. My opponent's like, yeah, that's weird, man. And I'm like, really? It's weird now. Okay. And the thing with stacking is that it's so hard to prove that, you know, you could call a judge over, but you also like, you don't want to look like you're trying to incriminate yourself, like trying to get a free win. So it's a gray area that overall, if you want to avoid it, don't let your opponent shuffle your deck or like do one of these. Just say, hey, look, I would appreciate it if you kept my deck on the mat and just did a simple cut. And if they have a problem with it, call a judge, especially with COVID too. And I'm not saying that you should do this to cheat because obviously that's wrong, but some players don't feel comfortable you touching their cards. If you're one of those players, you can just say, hey, I don't feel comfortable you touching my cards because of COVID and all that. How do you wish my deck to be cut? And they just may say cut it in half. That way you can avoid having your deck potentially be stacked. Um, I haven't resorted to that. Um, I don't I don't know if I really want to resort to that because I don't want to look like I'm cheating. And again, that's where it's sort of a gray area because if you think the opponent's stacking, you want to call a judge, but unless you have concrete proof, you don't want to look like you're trying to stall or just get a free win or anything like that. But just keep that in mind. Watch out for stacking. Don't let your opponent stack your deck. If you see a lot of cards side by side, if you're using a search effect, I would say at that point that you've got enough concrete evidence where you can call a judge. Um, you just, you know, don't want it to look like you're just pissed off at your opponent or your salty and you're trying to, you know, get a free win or something like that. Um, other things, uh, don't come to an event if you're sick, uh, especially now that COVID is out in the world. If you're sick and you don't feel good, stay at home. Yu-Gi-Oh players are probably still going to come to the fucking event anyway. So wear a mask, have like your little, uh, Germex bottles, like attached to your book bag or something like that so that you can, you know, just spray them up whenever you're done with an, like with a game or a match or even the event at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> don't, um, bring food and drink into the event. This should be obvious because I have seen it years ago where, uh, some guy brought in like a fucking three liter of Coke or whatever it was, and he spilled it on the table. The judges DQ'd his ass because he ended up spilling it on some people's play mats and shit. Yeah, don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that moron. Just keep your food out in your car in like a cooler where even during the hot summertime, especially here in Florida where it's like 100 degrees, your shit will stay cool. Or keep it in your book bag, like keep some crackers or something in your bag, like you know, or go and get something to eat, like in between rounds or something. Some big events now, like YCSs will have lunch breaks in between some rounds. I've noticed that now more than usual, like they didn't do lunch breaks for years. Um, and now they're suddenly bringing them back. Um, but what are some other things that I'm not bringing up? Like, are there things that you have seen going to competitive events? I feel like a lot of these things are obvious, but 
I mean, there's a reason why Konami now has in their policy that if you smell like dog shit ass, that you can get DQ'd. The judge can tell you, you smell like shit. Get your ass out of here. Like, I can't tell you how many times even, like, I've walked up to, like, tables and stuff, and I just see these fat-ass Yu-Gi-Oh players with their big old ass cracks hanging out of their pants. Like, number one, pull your pants up. Number two, put on deodorant. And number three, if you are of a bigger size, that's okay. I'm not making fun of you. It's just be, be conscious of your body. <laughs> like... Is nasty with a capital N, like Jesus Christ, y'all. But anyways, you guys, please let me know down in the comments what you think about all this. Have you seen some nasty ass Yu-Gi-Oh players? And if you have, what what's your stories? What are some things that you should avoid doing at events? Oh, don't steal people's shit and don't bring cards in your trade binder that you don't plan on trading or selling because you your shit will get jacked somehow, some way. Your shit will get jacked. So only bring the necessities for the love of God because. You don't want to get shit stolen. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.